Welcome to the second GDPPC webinar. We hope you already had a chance to watch our first webinar and that you found it helpful for preparing your first policy memo. You'll need to submit your memo by 30th November and we would like to take this opportunity to give you a bit more advice on finalizing your memo. We put together writing checklists which we would like to share with you. Take a close look and revisit your memo afterwards to make sure you have everything covered. This is your chance of receiving one of the up to five ten thousand US dollar scholarships, so don't miss it. We count on your submission and want to read what you have to say about digital freedom, no matter where you're from. Here is a brief overview of what we'll look at. We'll first walk you through the four checklists. They're an evidence-based analysis and argumentation, recommendations, structure, and citation. Second, we'll briefly recap some of the details of submitting your memo. Let's get started. The four checklists correspond to the evaluation criteria you can find on the GDPPC website. Here, we focus on the most relevant issues, so make sure to also go through the writing guidelines on our website for more details and guidance. Before you submit your memo, use the checklists for each category to review the content of your policy memo. This will help you write a good memo. We have kept the checklist as questions, so try to answer each question when you go through your piece. If you are satisfied, that's great. If you think you can improve parts of your memo further, then revisit it and make those elements better. We hope this will help you further strengthen your writing. To make sure that your memo has a convincing analysis based on evidence, it is helpful to answer four key questions. Have you clearly communicated the nature and urgency of the policy problem at the very beginning of your memo? Here it is very important that you address the tasks specifically mentioned for each scenario and explain what the key issues are. Do you discuss different policy options for the given problem and do you demonstrate that your chosen alternative represents the most suitable solution to the problem? Also, do you provide sufficient evidence to back up your arguments through examples, comparisons and hard data? And finally, do you present arguments in a straightforward and logical manner that is easy to follow? Can a wide range of readers, particularly non-specialists, understand it? Make sure not to use too technical language. Recommendations are an important part of your memo. To have convincing recommendations, try to answer the following questions. Do your recommendations clearly outline a course of action to solve the policy problem? Also, are your recommendations feasible and specific? And finally, are the recommendations logically divided into separate measures and clearly presented? A good structure is also very important. Your best arguments and ideas may not convince a reader if he or she has difficulties to locate them in the text. Make sure to have a structure that supports your analysis and can be easily followed by someone with little time. Remember, you're the government's advisor, so try to check your memo using the following questions. Is the structure of the paper clear and easy to follow, and do the sections and paragraphs logically follow on from each other? Does the introduction convince and prepare the reader to read the whole paper? And does the conclusion provide a sense of completeness to the paper? Also, are the recommendations easily identifiable in the text? And finally, is the title interesting and has keywords that clearly indicate the focus and problem addressed in the paper? In addition to analysis, recommendations and structure, citation is the last criterion your paper will be judged on. So do make sure that you use credible evidence to support your arguments and make sure to cite the sources you use properly. The following four questions below will help you with this. First, have you followed the APA citation style throughout the text? You can find more on this specific style on our website under Writing Guidelines. Also, have you included sources that are authoritative and reliable enough to support your arguments? And also, did you double check that all the ideas you used from others are properly cited? And as a final question, did you include a list of references at the end with full details for each source? We hope these checklists are helpful for you. The focus so far was about the content, but you also need to make sure you follow our submission guidelines, which we briefly summarize here. Your memo must be between 800 and 1200 words long not including the list of sources or your bibliography. Upload your memo in a Word or PDF format in a font not smaller than 11 point and make sure you use APA embedded citation style. Further, include a page number on each page and put your code number and not your name on each page. 
This is the code that you received when you registered for the challenge. And finally, make sure you complete both a spell and grammar check before sending in your paper. That's it, so good luck with the final touches on your memo. Let us know if you have questions on writing your memo and contact us at questions at gdppc.org. And don't forget the deadline for handing in your memo, 30th November 2012. We want to know what you have to say, so don't miss your chance.